the reason I have a hand is because I was brought to this hospital for this surgery. That's the only reason I have a hand. June 23rd, 2003, I was working, checking equipment on my rounds at night, and one of the pieces of equipment was jammed or clogged. I went to do a closer inspection. At that point, I turned the machine off. Momentum being what it is, the machine keeps rolling. It's a big machine. I went to look inside of it with a light that I usually carry, um, a, a Brinkman light, and um, the light failed. When it failed, my hand was inches away from that impeller, and I could not hear it moving or see it moving. I tapped the light once on the side, and when I did, it hit the light. So when the impeller hit the light, I could not release it in time. My, my hand was crushed and, and cut. So I was trapped for about an hour, hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. I really don't know clearly how long I was trapped. It did a lot of damage. Once my hand was removed from the machine, I noticed that my index finger was basically flopping. It was hanging on by skin. Um, cut me across here and then down in the middle of my hand. So it went all the way through here and then basically this way across my hand. You know, the paramedics were looking for the tip of my thumb. Reality kind of hits, you know, you're, you're hurt a lot worse than you really thought you were. So they found the tip of my thumb. When the paramedics got to me, they basically said, we're waiting on a helicopter to fly you to the University of Maryland. Of course, at that point, one of the paramedics, other paramedics said, look, in the time it takes for a helicopter to get here, we can put you in an ambulance and have you at Union Memorial, and that's where they're gonna take you anyway. They're gonna take you over to Union Memorial because of the hand center. I had never heard of Curtis National Hand Center before I was brought here for my surgery now. But I can tell you this, if I know anyone today that hurts their hand, this is where they come. I won't recommend any other place or any other doctor. I, I never feared losing the rest of my hand. Um, I didn't really think about it much. You know? I didn't even want to look at my hand at that point. I knew. When I woke up, my arm was elevated in this position, wrapped around my arm, keeping it warm because they did a vein transplant. I could see my fingertips, so I knew that like one wasn't there. Um, I didn't really know how much damage was done to my thumb. And then Dr. Higgins came in in the morning and said, you know, Lair, you lost your index finger but I think you're gonna be pretty good with the rest of them. Now they did have to keep an eye on my middle finger, which is now my index finger, because that's the one that got the vein graft. And of course they did like every half an hour, they did more or less a, a, a pulse test on that finger to make sure I had blood flow. They did a great job. And I do know then for a fact that there was a young man before me that night that he worked on for several other hours, probably 10, on him as well. So it's a tough job. If I counted them up, I mean, I've, I've had multiple bone grafts. The last one was pretty, pretty uh, amazing because they, the surgeon, Dr. Higgins, took bone, tissue, and skin, and a blood vessel from my leg and brought them to my hand balked it up, it was up the size of a, maybe a baseball, half of a baseball, and I wore that for about two months. And then once he was satisfied that the healing was taking place the way it should, he went back in and removed basically what he had taken up. The, the bone stayed and there's a titanium plate that's still in place, and of course the vein graft. I was told by many people that if I hadn't come here, I wouldn't have a hand. <laughs>